What's up everybody, this is Matt Brown with another IoT hacking video today. I have a new flash programmer. I recently took a flash chip off the original generation one Facebook portal device and I did not have the proper flash reader that would support the chip that I pulled off of that device. So let's talk a little bit about that. So the chip in question that we have over on my workbench is using this new UFS universal flash storage format. The form factor is very similar to EMMC. It's designed to be an improvement, a replacement to EMMC storage and it's meant to be faster and uh, more reliable. So the problem is, is that all of our old readers, though the chip might fit into those reading uh, BGA sockets that we have, it's not going to support it with the software. We do need some new uh, software and or hardware that's going to support the reading of these new flash chips. So that's where I went out. Um, and I bought this UFI box flash reader. So this does do EMMC, which I, I have other tools that will do that, but we will test out the EMMC reading capabilities as well. But specifically the product that I am really interested in is this add-on device, which really is a completely standalone device, but my first con about this whole setup is that you need to have that other device plugged into the USB port on your laptop for this reader, which is a standalone device to function. It will like check to make sure you have the other one uh, plugged in. We'll talk about that once we look at, look at it over on the desk. But this is the UFI UFS programmer. It can read and write these new kind of flash chips. And so that's what we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of. So let's go over and look at the device on my desk. So here I've got a bunch of stuff uh, right here on my desk. So the main thing we're gonna start with is reading a UFS chip. So inside of this reader, I'm going to unplug this. I have a BGA chip here. You can go ahead and just look at that under the camera. And this looks very similar to an EMMC chip. Same exact uh, form factor, same exact package here, but this is using the new UFS standard and that left me without any device uh, before, I, before I purchased this device that would be able to read this. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in this box. You notice these USB cords are independently going to my computer and I have nothing connected to it. But their proprietary crappy software will not function unless this box is plugged in. I think it's like an anti-counterfeiting thing because there's actually it's it talks about reading a smart card when you start the software up, and I think that's actually what's plugged in under under that little like tamper evident uh, piece of tape. But we're not going to worry about that right now. So I've got the device plugged in, and now we're going to go back to my computer and look at my remote desktop here, which of course is, you know, just reacting really fast. All right. So we're going to go ahead and open this software. You may be asking, why am I running this uh, over RDP? Uh, why don't I just have a VM or something like that? Their software explicitly prohibits you from running it in a VM and it somehow detects that it's running in a virtual environment and it will fail <laughs> to run. So that's uh, con number two with this software. So when we start it up, it's gonna ask like, hey, do you want a spot where you're gonna save all your files at? I just pick the default and uh, 
Another thing to note that I want to point out to anyone using the software, I am, I am not recommending <laughs> buying this tool uh, unless you really need to read a UFS file system, uh, a, a flash chip, a file system on, on, on a UFS flash chip, uh, un unless there's some other op better option out there. So one thing that I want to note, if you are going down this route, You'll notice here I'm on version uh, 1.7. I actually started on version 1.6. So initially, I had tons of problems with the software that is the latest version, which is 1.8. It's complete garbage. It crashes all the time. In the middle of a read, it'll just start spinning, and it'll never never finish. So definitely use the, the older version of the software. Uh, and so once you, once you get into the software, the, the right version of it, we're just going to go over here, and so we already have our we have our chip. It's in the reader. Both of them are plugged in, so it has allowed us to launch the software. How kind of them! So we're going to go ahead and click Identify UFS, and it's going to read the chip, and it's going to read the whole uh, partition layout. Hopefully, uh, it's pretty slow sometimes, but here we go. There we go. So. We get this big old partition table. Again, this was pulled from the first gen Facebook portal device. And so we can go ahead and read. So I'm going to like click off this. And I'll just demonstrate beginning the read on one of these, because these reads can take a long time. It's not super fast all the time. Let's just read this system partition, because that's one that was somewhat interesting so we're going to click on that and we're going to click read and then you cross your fingers and you hope that it doesn't crash uh, again it seems to be crashing less in the older version of the software clearly there was some kind of regression uh, in the newer version of the software Yeah, in the old version, it would like it would, it would pause like right here every time at the same spot. So it's gonna read, it's gonna read that in, and then what it's gonna do is it's going to just save that bin file where I have selected to dump all that data. Which if I click through here, we'll get to that spot. So you can see I've been testing all this out. Sometimes it completely fails and just doesn't really read that much data out. Uh, so eventually it will finish. It looks like in this case we actually succeeded. So that's cool. Yeah, files saved. And here we go. So system A. So that, that partition is saved to this bin file. And then we can move that over to our Linux system for analysis. I have already copied it over here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this partition that we dumped. So we can just run the file command and we can see that it is, it is an ext2 file system. So we're in Linux, ext2 file system works pretty awesome out of the box. So what I have here is just an empty directory. We prove there's nothing in there. And so we're going to run sudo mount and we're just going to mount that file right onto the directory. And then we're going to go into the directory, and we can see that we have a partition in some kind of a what looks to be an Android open source uh, based device, some some kind of uh, fork or something like that off of the Android open source project. So um, we're not going to look through this. This is not a firmware analysis video, but clearly we were able to successfully extract firmware. Um, but you definitely may run into bugs where you try to read a partition and it just stops and it might give you like half the data in that partition and you just have to try again or you're out of luck until they fix the bugs in their software. Again, uh, it's not open source software. This is all like highly, you know, proprietary stuff, very complex wish there were more open source options out there. So now we're going to demonstrate uh, the EMMC reader and why I like this way better and all of the crappiness of this software doesn't matter for EMMC. So let's go back to 
the desk and talk about the EMMC reader. So there is a way, if you have an EMMC chip, you ha we have these uh, sockets here to uh, put the chips into. Now, a difference between this reader and some of the other ones I have is that you'll notice there's no kind of bounding wall for the chip to sit into. So you have to set the chip very carefully on uh, the correct, uh, in, the, in the correct spot for the pins to line up with the chip and make contact correctly. The other side of that is that you don't have to have a bunch of different adapters uh, that you that you like screw out and back in to your socket to get the sizing just right on the chip. So pro and con, pros and cons there. But let's say you put a chip into here. So I actually have a, an EMMC chip in here, and because it's so finicky, I'm not going to touch that for my demo. But let's say I were to put one of those in here, I could plug it into this box, the UFI box, and then use their EMMC software, their EMMC toolkit, which again, crappy Windows software, who knows if it works very well, and I can read the firmware that way. But we do not need to do that because we can take, uh, this is the other uh, set of BGA sockets, so we take that and we plug it into this nifty device, and this just converts it into a USB mass storage device. So it takes EMMC, converts it to you know, USB mass storage, and this will just show up in Linux if, again, if we have the chip situ situ situated correctly in here, it'll show up, all the partitions underneath the disk will show up. So let's get ready on our other side here. So we're just going to run dmessage with the dash w flag, and we're going to just hit enter. So we'll be able to see the uh, the new device that gets recognized. And so what we're going to see if we don't have the chip lined up correctly, it's going to just show up as like uh, just the device. Actually, let's simulate that. I didn't plan on this, but we can simulate that the the chip is not situated correctly. Uh, we're going to simulate that by using the empty socket, plugging it in, and let's watch what happens. There. So it shows up as a mass storage device, but you'll notice it only uh, detects the disk, but it doesn't detect any partitions that exist. So if I wanted to like look at what partitions so there, there, there's no like SD, SDC 1 2 3 4 for all the partitions on the disk so something's not right obviously in this case it means that it's because I have no no chip in that reader at all so let's uh, oh there'll be more messages when I disconnect that there we go now I'm going to plug it into the box that does have the EMMC chip from the Amazon Echo. So let's plug that in. And we have success. So see this, right, this line right here in dmessage is showing us that not only does it detect the mass storage device, it's seeing that there are a bunch of partitions on this disk. So what we can do now as we can say ls block grep sdc and so we can see actually the size of all these partitions so what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at this one that is the largest right here at the end so again uh, we can we can run file on dev Oh, oh, yeah, you can't do that. What am I doing? So I know what part I, I, I know that I can mount this, though. All right, so I'm going to make just a directory called mount, sudo mount. Uh, OK, so we're going to mount it. So clearly, there was a file system that Linux can handle and just mount over this directory. And we go in here, and we have a file system that we can navigate. So a fun fact 
that I uh, learned at a recent hardware hacking conference. I'm going to go ahead and put the research paper in the in the um, in the comments or in the description of this video, not the comments. All right. So on here we can just go. Let's just go sudo find and let's just look for like WPA sub. All right. So cool. So here we can find the WPA supplicant config file. There are other people's SSIDs and, and passwords that are still in this file. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to show the SSIDs. Uh, oh, come on. Pseudo cat. So, uh, so you're, when you, you know, when you give away that Amazon Echo device, when you sell it on eBay, whatever like that, if you don't factory reset it, and sometimes even, even if you do factory reset it, your Wi-Fi creds can still be on the device. And it does tend to just append to this file, to this WPA supplicant file. It seems like the Amazon Echoes, they're not uh, erasing the WPA supplicant file when you change your Wi-Fi information, which is pretty interesting. So. Uh, this was just a fun little exercise uh, to show that you can use this EFI uh, box device without all of the crappy software if it's EMMC, but if you are trying to read a UFS chip, currently there is no automatic bridge to a mass storage device that is available. If somebody could make a device like that, if that's possible, that would be really awesome. But uh, currently, we have to use the crappy software. There is one other alternative that I might look into if I, if I need to invest in it in the future from EasyJTAG. It's hard to find legitimate sources for all of this hardware. So it's, uh, I mean, you're definitely getting it shipped from China. But this is not a review. This is just my first impressions. I would not recommend this product, again, unless you really, really need to read a UFS chip. Uh, thank you so much for watching my videos. Have a good day.